um, I have a very important um, topic to, to talk about today. My name is Don Hill. I'm a Mohawk um, Turtle Clan from Six Nations. I was born on the, on the reserve in Ishwegan and um, lived most of my life at the residential school, or not most of it, but a lot of it, and then moved away and came back. But now I'm here because we have, um, I'd have to give you a little history of how we got to where we are today. After all the stories came out about uh, residential schools across Canada and stuff, and people start talking about their stories, and you have to remember, we're talking about little children and their stories. So <clears throat> back in 2008, a bunch of us survivors got together and we start talking about what we could do um, to remember what happened um, and what happened to them as children and what we could do about that. Um, I know that the community opted to keep the residential school, which I think is a really good thing because once it's gone, people tend not to believe that it happened. But so a group of us survivors decided, well, we should put in a park. And it started out as a very, very small garden type thing. But as we discussed, and um, my sister was very instrumental, <coughs> instrumental in um, helping us to move forward and having a larger vision of what we needed to have. So we decided on a memorial park. It took us a while. First of all, we had to um, become a corporation. So we're a not-for-profit corporation. Um, the members are survivors, second generation, and just really interested uh, community members who wanted to also have us move forward with that same vision. And so after that, we finally became um, uh, an organization with charity status. Took us a little while to get that, but every step was a, a learning process for us. Um, because none of us are really familiar with how all of this um, <clears throat> legal stuff went. Anyway, so we, we, we got our park and the band council gave us five acres to develop this park, which we were really, really glad they did that because um, we wanted it on the girls' side at the residential school where we used to play, where we used to be kind of more happy. Outside, I don't ever remember getting a strap, and or but just playing as kids, and so that was part of our vision as well, that we wanted some place where um, kids could be together, families could be together, people from, um, like, not just um, people from the reserve, but surrounding communities could come and also learn about the history, but also to find a quiet, peaceful place. We wanted something that was really positive where people would feel good. I mean, if they come out of that much all over there, the, the Mohawk Institute, uh, quite often there's no place to just kind of sit and reflect, you know, on what you heard or what you saw or the stories you heard. So we thought, well, you know, this park will be really good because they can come down here and sit. There'll be pathways, They'll, the pavilion will be here. There'll be a playground for children. Um, there'll be a ceremonial circle, a place where people can come from anywhere and do some teaching. We don't do the teaching because that's not our mandate. Our mandate was to, to construct this memorial park dedicated to all the, the children who attended here over the 142 years that it was open. And I'm assuming there was a lot of, well, I know what it was like, but there was a lot of negativity here, a lot of um, violence and stuff like that. And so, like I said, the, the playground was some place where you could be happy as a child for a little bit. <clears throat> so that's what we want with this park. And it's kind of like right now, we're, we're still having issues, um, not issues, but uh, maybe problems getting funding all the time. And I know Ontario Trillium was very instrumental in helping us to move forward. Canada Heritage donated some money to us to build that uh, friendship circle out there. And Band Council always funded us every year. Economic Development also funded us for the master plan. And uh, so it was more like a community thing. And eventually this part will go back to the community. It's not ours. Like we say we're Mohawk Village Memorial Park, but we're part of Six Nations. And, and when it's all done, it will be part of this whole development here 
where people can come. Like you got the cultural center here, you got their actual residential school being restored, and then you'll have this beautiful positive place when it's all done because there's lots of planting to be done here. Like once we put back the apple trees, um, we'll have different types of um, uh, foliage, different bushes and stuff, so that it's a beautiful place to be, a peaceful place to be. And it's open for everybody. And I, I really want to stress that it's open for community, not just ours, but for families, friends, just getting together, you know, walking through the next steps for us and they're costly steps i have to admit that is that um putting in pathways we have to put in pathways so that people can have access to the park so we have a wheelchair accessibility ramp to go in and we've applied and been turned down several times from different organizations um, who probably have um, something more needy to, to d donate to but that pathway from the parking lot down to the friendship circle into the pavilion and the washrooms is something that we'd really like to do immediately and i know we have approached our council and the commemoration committee about helping with that us with that and the, the government actually i don't know if it was provincial or federal did say they would help us with our park and so because of this um you know the um uh, ground penetrating radar that has to be done all over this area. It was kind of been put on hold for a little bit. Although a couple years ago we got the Archaeological Society, uh, the ARA, to do a level three um, grid search through our five acres. And they found no, because there was rumors, there was rumors that there were babies under the trees. And so we had them all dug up and, you know, because they were dead and diseased to start with. So they all they were all dug up and um they found no bodies uh, they found old artifacts from the old village that was here at one point which was really interesting um but no bodies and so but to put everybody's mind at rest we decided this ground penetrating radar thing that's going on looking for bodies and stuff we really have to do our part again just just to make sure that the community is okay with us building this park and we're okay with it ourselves because we don't want things to you know turn out that we didn't do everything in our power to make sure it was okay to build here and um, um, part of that committee is now working on where we're going to start and we don't, we want kind of want our park to be also done fairly quickly so we can move on but i know that um, woodland cultural center um, did get some money to finish off their the renovations in the Mohawk uh, itself Institute and um, so and put in the parking lot over there and so those things are kind of um, we're all kind of waiting for that to happen and it's kind of like oh it's getting kind of critical because winter's coming in and they said that we, we it's not as good to do it over the winter um, but there's a number of things they can do and um, it's um I guess everybody's just waiting and it's kind of a okay everybody's kind of like walking on eggshells do we start do we do we insist on getting ours done or we can't insist <laughs> because we don't run that but the, the community is training getting training to to be able to use that equipment and so I think that's helpful too that's an education in itself um, but as far as our park is concerned once we get that done and we get those pathways in, we can start working on getting funding like for the memorials. There's gonna be um, uh, six memorials here and we're gonna farm those out to um, different artists, not just from our community because the, the Mush Hall incorporated all kinds of uh, different communities across Ontario, some in Quebec, some in uh, what is now none of it. Uh, we used to call it the Northwest Territories because we did have some of those children at the Mushroom. And um, so we tried, we're tried. we going to try to get as much input into what needs to be done here. We've already done all of those things. We've had many community meetings to find out what people really wanted here. And at first there was very little, um, very little concern or input. Um, we couldn't get too many people out to really give us um, their opinion and, on stuff. And so we kind of more or less went ahead and said, okay, we've got, a, we've got this design that we hired somebody to do, and, and we hired a contractor. And, 
um, so we start moving ahead and, and right now we're still looking at um, funding for all of those various aspects of our park but we have been getting quite a few donations um, not to the tune of where we'd like because nothing's cheap and um, I think this pavilion itself cost us about 400000 and um, and the memorial circle out there or not memorial or friendship circle out there cost us 50 fifty thousand um so we're kind of and you can't you can't keep funding and that's part of our problem is that you can't get money and just hang on to it like let's say um uh, otf gave us money to put something on well you have a time frame you can't hold that money until you get enough to do a big batch of things so we do um little um little parts of it and I know our contractor doesn't like that he would like to have you know the two million to complete the whole park all at once and we'd love to have that too but that ain't happening um, so um, we go as far as we can with what we get when we were talking um, amongst ourselves about putting in those memorials we realized that it's not just Six Nations people that there are so many communities in southern Ontario even northern Ontario that need to have input into this park and into those memorials. So in the long range, what we're planning on doing is um, requesting artists to, we'll give them the, the dimensions of the base. What can they create that would enhance the idea of this memorial park for children? I know on Six Nations, I have a lot of um, artists who are capable of those kinds of things, but because it wasn't just us here that there are we have we have really good artists all over the place and so we decided that we would send this out to the various friendship centers or um, council houses uh, of all the places that we could think of or that we could find that had children here and give everybody that opportunity to design or to create something um, to, to be in part of this memorial well, we also have like Geronimo Henry is, is doing, is doing um, uh, research on all the children and he's getting a list but he also we talked with him about um, a memorial fence or wall I guess it's a wall uh, where would we put that you know and how do you gather all the names over 142 years but there's a way because I know my, my sister's been doing some research and we found different names from back in the 1800s I don't know where she found it but she did um, and like there's lots of people who could do that kind of research and find those names or family members could say um, My great-grandmother was here. Her name was whatever and what years we're gonna try to get that done Not we but Geronimo will or somebody will because that's not something that we're doing But we would gladly have it in our park or they might even just leave it up near the um, residential school <coughs> um, So there's, there's a lot of things that have to come together before this area is is really like I don't want to say a tourist attraction but a historical place to be um, because so many people nowadays are wanting to know are wanting to know the stories are wanting to be part of um, the more memorial park or contributing to the, the residential school its restoration and stuff like that uh, and and we want everybody to come together to give us some ideas to be able to visit this park in a peaceful way and that's what we're asking is that people come here and with a good mind and because that's part of our teachings as well you come together with a good mind help us move forward um, in this creation and I think uh, it'll bring communities together everybody will be a lot um, I guess you'll create better relations between communities and not just around us but from all over like we have had people come here from like Toronto or you know uh, from the north everywhere Quebec you name it you know looking to find out what went on here and why we're trying to do this part um, and I think that's the key thing that we want something that's really positive and peaceful the pathways that uh, when we get those in will create more interest, we will have more people coming into the park to utilize what's here um, because it can be used as a, a walking path. Uh, we have no problem with bicycles coming in, you know, um, but it'll be a place because 
people like to exercise and we, we all know we have to exercise. And so if we have these pathways coming in that circle around or move through the park, people can do that. You know, and it, they're always saying social distance. We'd have those markers again for those types of things. So you need to keep your distance and have signs up for that, all of that stuff. But people will be able to move through this area and get that exercise that they need. You know, if you come with your friend or something, um, as long as you're together and you don't kind of try to mingle with others, like that's where, it, that's our reality right now. Um, those are the kinds of things that we want to see and at some point we're hoping this COVID thing will blow over and people will be back to normal and situations will be back to normal and that our park can kind of like create a lot of interest in this area <clears throat> and the reason for our park. And I think that's what most of us really, really want is to, to, to reflect on what happened to kids, what these were kids like myself I was here when I was seven my sister was six I had another sister who was five and the two older siblings but when you come into a facility like this you really want to focus on what happened that was good and the good parts were outside uh, and so therefore this peaceful park that we want this positive place to counteract what we had to let go from there and I say we let go but it doesn't mean you forgot you know you just move forward as um, as adults and try to do as much as you can to create positiveness that's what our park is all about and so well hopefully we can still move forward with funding and stuff like that and that's what we're trying to do right now is just get as much funding as we can and we've been getting a lot of donations but nothing really really big so that we can say okay we got 500,000 we can put all those pathways in um, you know, it just hasn't happened yet, but we're hoping that at some point it will. So we can move forward and we won't give up. Um, most of us are very um, uh, focused on what this park is going to be. When we have members who are in their 80s, you know, and they were here, both young men, as young boys, I guess, and young girls, some that are in their 70s, a lot that are in their 60s from when it closed in 1970, but they're also just um, really focused, I guess, on, on creating this positive place. And, and I, I have to commend all of those people who are part of our board or who are interested in our board, who donate to our board, um, you know, to our park rather, um, to move this thing, move it along, get where we, we want to go so that those seven generations down the road, it will still be here and people will know that um, survivors can do things. It doesn't have to be, we're stuck back there, we can't move forward, we can't create, do anything, you know. With strong hearts and strong minds, I think we've done a lot so far, you know, just moving forward. Now, if, you, if you'd care to donate to our very worthy park, you can go to our site, www.mohawkvillagepark.com that will bring you to our site there's a button where you can press you can look at the video of the park too and there's a button you can press for donations it'll it can scroll down and most of that you can um, donate through canada helps and that's where most of our donations have come from is through canada helps they do take a certain portion of it but they give us more than the majority of the, of the money they take a very small amount because i guess they have to, to um uh, also pay people to do all of this stuff you know they've got paperwork and stuff but uh, also you can send um, donations right to the park you can do e-transfers um, right to our bank account even though it has my name on it Don it doesn't come to me it goes directly it says Don at mohawkvillagepark.com um, uh, on an e-transfer but it doesn't come to me it goes right into our bank account because I have a signing authority and two others we always have others with signing authorities I don't need to sign for that but if a check came in and or an invoice we have to sign for so we get an audit every year and I want to stress that we are a very legitimate organization and so like I said we, none of us get paid except for our project coordinator and, um, and she's the one who knows all of the technical stuff and without her I think we'd be lost because being an older generation we don't always have um, the know-how but she makes sure that she does know how. And so 
um, that's where we are right now. And um, thank you for listening to my story. Yeah.